I would love to stay in my neighborhood where I was born and raised, but I'm like, is my neighborhood going to kill me? Eh, it's a possibility. That's a 50-50 draw. Draw the, draw, the, draw the card. I don't know. Roll the dice. <laughs> During World War II, a large influx of black and brown immigrants arrived in San Francisco in search of jobs, and many found work at the Hunters Point Naval Shipyard. Later on, after World War II, Hunters Point became one of the few places people of color could settle down as racist redlining policies segregated them from most parts of the city. Now, the community struggles to stay afloat in the racist, radioactive wake left by the Naval Shipyard. Um, most black people moving out of the South uh, moved out around the time in the 50s and whatnot. That's when a lot of black populations moved to Hunters Point. Because of the shipyard, it became, you know, a black neighborhood. In the, after World War II, in the early 1950s, there were all these tests that the Navy was doing. And the Navy was interested in, in what would happen to ships downwind from nuclear weapons. So this is where the Navy brought a lot of these ships after the testing and then decommissioned them. Uh, at some point, Hunters Point became one of the bases that the Navy wanted to turn over to the local community. And actually San Francisco was happy to take it over and the Navy supposed to clean it up and put it in a pristine or livable condition. So when it comes to cleaning this up, the city of San Francisco is anxious to move ahead. Right? The Navy is anxious to get rid of it. Uh, so they bring in all these consultants, uh, and of course, somebody faked the data. Well, there's radioactive um, uh, particles the Navy left at the shipyard. Instead of retesting, they, they just want to uh, sweep it up under the rug um, and pretend like we don't exist and we don't deserve to breathe proper um, air with, without contaminants like everyone else. You know, I have a list of like five, five soft metals and radioactive isotopes that are in my system. I have things that are above reference range for any human in my body. So that's the reason it's serious for me. Ah uh, yeah, I have friends that died. It affects me. You know, it's, it's always in our mind, my mind, that any day, you know, I go to the hospital and they tell me I'm, I got cancer or something like that. The Naval Shipyard is only one of many pollutants in Hunters Point. Garbage dumps and sewage plants with all of San Francisco's waste, as well as numerous freeways adjacent to the neighborhood, contribute to the contamination of this community. Bayview is ground zero for dumping. We have the water waste plant. We, did, we get everybody's crap from San Francisco, also Daly City. We have cement plants. The Navy at the Hunters Point Shipyard, uh, Recology, we have the freeways in and out. You're having piles of things, a burden on our body. So we are suffering from asthma, um, cancer, um, low birth rate, and, and we need to do something about it. Hunters Point is just one example of a nationwide pattern of environmental racism. In the U.S., people of color are more likely to die from environmental causes, and more than half of people who live close to hazardous waste are people of color. When we look at all the, the industrial pollution in a place like San Francisco, it's in the lower southeast side, right? That's where all the black and brown people live. They tend to put us in neighborhoods when things are going down here or things are horrible. The neighborhood where I live is probably going to kill me because of my health issues, and I'm only 33 years old. So it's, it's crazy. Are you her partner in crime? Yeah, right now, right now, what we're about to do, we're about to walk up the streets and talk to some people. And uh, we're doing our environmental work. And oh, this one is a Bayview Community Air Quality Needs Assessment. So just based on the pollution in, in our neighborhood. And so we're just trying to get, we're trying to basically compromise a, a listing and just see how what people think about the pollution in the, in the area. Let me give you some information on some of the pollution that's surrounding our community. We're trying to do something about it. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. When people think of Baby Hunters Point, especially businesses that are coming, they think of this as a, only an industrial community. We have a neighborhood here that have been here for generations that have worked the shipyard, that came from the south to work here. 
They need to stop thinking of us like, oh, we can dump everything here. It's just an industrial neighborhood. We have a functioning neighborhood here. People live here. They work here. Shit, they die here yes. too. I feel like the Navy Hunters Point Shipyard is, it's like the codification of white supremacy in San Francisco, where you have this really liberal place that's supposed to be all progressive, right? They're not, you know, we're relegating black people to corners of a community, taking from them and sitting in these horrible, pollutive sites in their neighborhood. And while they're being damaged and, and, and hurt and, and killed and death is coming from these pollutants, we're sitting there talking about we're progressive and doing nothing about it. We are demanding um, full cleanup um, at the shipyard. Um, we are demanding that unpermitted um, concrete plants be closed down. You know, we are demanding that um, the community um, is allowed to be informed of the pollution that surrounds us, right? So um, that's where it starts. I don't just want it to be cleaned up. I want it to be studied, right? And I want us to get our reparations. I want repairment for people who have radioactive stuff in their blood. Period. They got to pay what they owe, right? And so I want y'all to hit up your city council members and let them know that we need to go after the Navy right now because they are responsible for fixing our community. Just recently, Hunters Point was admitted into the Assembly Bill 617 program, providing technical assistance regarding exposure to harmful emissions and a platform for community residents to become involved partners with the local government. Through environmental justice organizations like Green Action, activists continue to educate residents and build support concerning the coexisting motions for proper remediation of the shipyard, retesting of contaminated soil, and reparations for affected residents.